Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mark from Solar Games and today we are going to address a video that I did recently on the Commander format and how it is hurting, killing magic. So the first thing I want to say is this, right? First of all, I think the video was reasonable, but it could have been done better. I think I definitely didn't represent myself properly in some places and I should be more clear about exactly what I'm saying. So that's the purpose of this video is more just as a response because I oftentimes feel like, you know, there's, you know, if you make mistakes or you, you say something and it's misunderstood, oftentimes pe people don't respond to it. And I don't like that. I, I want to make sure that especially for a topic as serious as this, I do want to be really clear. Um, and I'll tell you this right now, while maybe this video will make some of you guys feel better, most of you probably won't have no opinion change. And the reality is very few people will probably even watch this video because they won't seem as, you know, disaster or negativity as the previous one. So still, for those that who are watching, thank you. And I appreciate you being here. First of all, high level things, right? Um, I knew that previous video was going to be polarizing. That's not why I released it. I did it because I felt it was necessary. And honestly, you know me. I'm the kind of guy who's always going to say things that maybe other people aren't saying. And the reason for that is because I think they're true. And if they're true, they need to be said. That's all. Simple. Um, first of all, most people, very nice in the comments. Appreciate it. A lot of my, you know, longtime subscribers, patrons, people who don't know, who I don't know, who don't know me. A lot of people were very nice, actually. I was surprised. I, I was expecting a ton of hate in the comment, you know, very short, brief, you suck, screw you, get off internet, etc. type of comments. I actually got none of those. Everybody's super nice, which tells me another thing that I really appreciate about the commander community, the casual format community, is that they are very nice. They think deeply about a topic and they're pretty open about hearing about it, even if they disagree with it. So I really appreciate that. And again, the most of the responses I got were not just like one liner saying you suck. They were actually well written essays, which tells me that you're passionate about the game, but also you're intelligent. You're putting your own thought in it and you're not just agreeing with any content creator just because they say X, Y, or Z. And that's really, really nice. Um, yeah. And that's the thing. Like I've had videos where more people watched the videos. But I can tell you right now, this video is definitely one where I had the most amount of people uh, writing long form responses. So yeah, it just, it just goes to show. I was actually really surprised by that. So there, there you go. So let's talk about the specifics, right? Um, <clears throat> let's talk what this video was about, right? So first of all, does Mark hate the commander format? I think this is really important because, you know, I. I feel like reading through the comment, a lot of what I saw was some people taking maybe the title of the video, maybe the image, maybe like the first couple things I said about that video and then extrapolated the entire video. Now I know it's a long video, stay a while, listen, but the problem is that it's really hard for me to explain that in a very short, brief way and feel like I've given a complete answer. So that's why it's that way. Long story short, I don't hate Commander. I hate the fact that Watsi has a way, a heavy handed way to push every single thing right now. It's commander in a way that it becomes unfun for me. Now this could still be very fun for you, but I think there's a lot of the community who feels the same way as me, who used to like commander, who really thought it was a great format, who thought it was an interesting casual format that they could really engage with. And it's just becoming more and more and more monetized. And this is the thing personally, at this point, I would prefer another format over commander, probably some, something like limited, probably something like cube is something that I would actually really enjoy. And, but that doesn't mean commander is like on the bottom of the list for me, right? There, are, as you know, there are many, many different formats of magic for legal play. Commander is probably a close second or third for me right now, right? So obviously limited drafting, that kind of thing, cube, probably second, first and second, and then we have commander right, right after that. So I don't hate the format because there's plenty of formats I would never even play and or have any interest in. So there you go. Okay, so on to the meat of the actual response. What was the point of the original video? I want to make this point very clear. So I think what I'm trying to say is this, right? First of all, I should have done a better job explaining all this stuff and presenting my case. It's something I'm working on and it's one of those things where 
you know, I type in notes, but a lot of times, you know, the, the notes themselves are like this long and two pages. So it's really hard for me to keep that in my head. And I don't like looking down and reading my notes. So that's why it's a little bit rough sometimes because my thoughts are out there, especially when it goes on to a longer video. It's really just a stream of my thoughts, which honestly some people appreciate, but I think a lot of you guys probably don't like that. So I'm trying to be very clear about reading my notes today and maybe I can say it better. First, I'm saying that Commander is a popular format, no doubt, everyone can, can agree with this. Wasi also sees that popularity, right, originally, and realize it that it's under monetized. Very similar to the kind of words they use for uh, Dungeons and Dragons, except they've already achieved it. So now that they see the money's flowing in, they see that the Commander products are selling super well, what are they doing? They're pushing it super hard and they're blinded by the actual problems that they're causing, right? And maybe they're not causing it, maybe there's some other problems within the community itself, but I don't know what those are, and those are probably very specific and small and insignificant, but I think more generally, the problems that are caused by Wizards of the Coast overprinting Commander products, inserting it into every single thing, is actually what's causing problems in general for Magic. And they're not seeing that. I mean, the fact that they come out and ask questions like, huh, I wonder why Standard is dying oh wow, I wonder why box prices are dropping. Like they're asking these questions and, and, and they don't understand why there's a problem with other formats when they focus too much on one. And again, their solution is just basically, let's continue to push this one format because everyone likes it and the people who like it, they, they monetize very well. So let's push more people to become commander players. And so they'll buy more cards and we can make more money. The thing is about corporations that their decision points and their kind of guiding star is all about money. So at some point, all they can see is money. All they can see is, well, if it makes me more money, that's exactly what I should be doing, right? They have shareholders to answer to. And they think because you're paying for something, that must mean you like it. And so of course I should give you twice as much, three times as much. And that's exactly what's happening, right? So if you think about the, the products recently, think about like box toppers in Dominaria United. It's not a Dominaria United card, it's a commander card. I think about recently with March of Machines, you have pre-release kits that literally have commander cards that they tell you it's not legal for the limited event, but it's some, for something that you take home and build your commander deck with. You know, then you have Multiverse Legends, all these things that are inserted and what's the purpose? Yeah, sure, like Ragavan could be used for, you know, your, your modern decks, but most of those cards are for commander. Your team ups, these super high casting spell cards, I mean, at the drafting table, a lot of times now, we're just looking at like how to build decks most of the time with common on commons, and that's how you sh you're supposed to do it anyways. But the rares aren't even effective anymore. I mean, if you get a Galta, it's a nice card, but man, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to cast it, right? And that's a big problem for drafts because Commander, by printing those cards into the set, it's actually making the actual draft experience worse because now it's one less card that you can even consider. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And the thing is, remember, Commander is not making enough money, right? I mean, it's making a lot of money, but Wizards thinks we can make more money. So of course, for the people that have cards, right? You already have your Commander decks, you have all the cards you really think you are ever gonna need. What are they doing? They're soft rotating the cards because they're gonna print you a better version of that card or another card that you have to add. And so of course, you have to cut one from your current deck. And for the new players, guess what? Because they're printing the best version now, sure, we can say, well, that card is now cheaper. Well, if, if we have mana drains readily available, why would I wanna have a counter spell, right? You can say you can double up, but then you, you can imagine all the way down the line, there is some other counter spell thing that just gets like cut. If there's always a better version of X, then it's always gonna push, you know, push all the other cards down. And so of course, if you want to be competitive, you want to be, you know, re, you know, like good at the commander table, you have to chase the best version of that card. And yes, it does lower the cost of those pre previously staple cards, but those cards aren't staple anymore anyways anymore. And so the fact that they've dropped in price, it doesn't really matter too much. And as a new player, well, guess what? You're chasing that same card and you don't even have access to it. So, it's even worse. Right? So that soft rotation is hurting. And also remember Wiz of the Coast has figured out that over monetizing and over monetizing too quickly is a problem. Case in point is Magic 30. We all know it was a disaster, failure. And realistically, the reason why it failed so hard is because, well, they over monetized it. See, you can't really go from like, 
you know, two, three hundred dollar booster boxes and suddenly drop down to four packs that you charge a thousand dollars for, right? But look what's happening with Commander Masters. We're getting closer to that again, right? So they're saying, saying what about half price? What if I charge you 500 for it? Would you buy it? What if I charge you 370? What if I charge? And they just keep pushing this envelope up. And that's the thing. Wizards of the Coast realized they can't go from 250 to 1,000. But the super scary part is they also realize they can go higher. And they, as long as they keep pushing that envelope higher, maybe you don't even realize it because you think, well, Magic is supposed to be a $200 game. Remember, it used to be a lot less. Now, inflation, all that things, you know, all considered, paper doesn't inflate that much. It's not like we go out there and we buy like a ream of paper for printing or whatever, and it just suddenly costs way more money, like, like double, triple the price. It doesn't cost that much, right? And so what's happening is that there is a soft inflation even within Magic and the card game world that's going to keep continue pushing prices up. And I think one of the things that Commander players like is the fact that their cards are fairly staple. You don't have to change them too often. Your deck is going to be good to go for a long time. Well, guess what happens when they keep pushing these things and pushing higher prices? The new players can't get in because the cards are expensive, and the old players have to continue to pay more because they have to keep their decks upgraded, right? And that's basically where we're headed. And that will eventually allow Wizard of the Coast to monetize the commander players even more. So, I mean, what is the future of this thing? We're going to get to a point where Magic 30 doesn't even seem like that much. Yeah, we can do Commander Masters, Commander Double Masters, Double Commander Masters for $1,000, maybe. And then nobody cares. So one of my patrons, right, uh, Shadow Cloud, brought up a really good point. And among all the comments, you know, I saw this and I realized that's a point that I did not actually address in my previous video. He asked, how would you fix it, right? So it, I see that you have problems with this whole uh, situation, how would you fix it? And I think that's really good because that is actually in my character to go and not just present problem, but also to say, what would, what would I do if I was in that position? So I'll just put it this way, right? I think three words is what I would use to fix this, the, the, this situation. Balance, focus, and organic. So balance first, right? Don't focus commander to the point where it takes away from other formats. If you read some of the other comments here, right, just again, take, take the fact that there's going to be the commander side of the table and the people who are kind of anti-commander side. Look at some of the people who are not very, who were more in agreement with me on the previous video and look at their comments. Really sincerely read it. You'll notice a very common thing that's happening, which is people don't really want their products that they're paying money for, standard, limited, draft, etc., to be, just be full of commander cards. Right? Imagine if you open a commander deck and Wizards of the Coast is pushing competitive play and it says, hey, guess what? Um, here's a code for a arena deck that you can play in standard today. Uh, and, and here's three cards that we put in your commander deck. I mean, you're probably going to swap them out anyways, but they're really good for standard. How would you feel as a commander player? You bought the product. You had a purpose. You didn't really want to buy the product for something else. And then imagine they do this more and more to the point where you're like, why am I even buying a commander product when all I get is inserted other products, right? And take a more extreme version, right? Imagine if Wizards of the Coast sells you a magic product and inside the magic product, like a good 20% of the box is like card fight, dual, dual masters, a different game altogether. How would you feel? Sure, you can say, well, it's just extra. I can just ignore them. But what's the point? I didn't buy that card game. I bought this card game, right? So I'm not against Commander Masters being a set that's really just for Commander players. I'm not against Commander Precons being all for Commander players. I'm not against Commander Legends, all these other things, all for Commander players. What I am saying is we have to strike a balance. And Wizards of the Coast, for better or for worse, mostly for worse, never understands balance, right? It's either we print everything to oblivion, right? Or there's not, not enough product and everyone's angry. 30 years, 30 years of understanding how their game sells and how their game grows, they still don't understand how much product to print to just meet the demand and not go higher. They even changed over to a print to demand model and they still can't figure that out. And I see the same problem, Commander. It's just the over, the unbalanced nature of it, right? The, the, the fact that Commander cards are now cannibalizing other formats is a problem. And put your, you know, like put yourself... Um, put yourself in someone else's shoes who's on the other side, who is 
just trying to be here for a limited event or for draft, why are they looking at a commander card? Second point, focus. I think rather than having commander pre-cons, commander cards in every set, every single booster box, every single product you can have, I think it's better if we focus and make really good commander decks and commander products. Let's be fair. Wizards of the Coast in the last two years has made some, honestly, heck, I think Wizards of the Coast forever has made some really good commander products, okay? I think Commander 2021 was really good, right? The, the, Boulder, the Boulder's Gate ones. The Adventures in the Forgotten Realm ones are pretty good. The, the Ikoria commanders are pretty good. Even the Strixhaven ones, I like those too. I think, the, I think some of the decks from the Streets of New Capenna set were pretty good. Warhammer 40K, right? Really good. A lot of people love those kind of cards. What I'm saying is I don't really need a commander deck or three every single set. I mean, nowadays, we, you, know, you used to have one commander pre-con per year. And so that was the day, you know, in June, you get your commander pre-cons and you have a nice party with everybody, you know, and then it's, it's awesome, right? And I still think those once a year commander pre-cons are of the highest quality. But what I fear right now is that the more they push people to continue to make commander pre-cons for every single set, the more that number one, it dilutes all the products all across. Do you think your once a year commander pre-con will be as high quality if the people who are building all the decks are continuously grinding out new decks every single season, every single year, every single set, every single supplemental product, every single secret layer? It's too hard, I think. That's number one. Number two, because they don't have focus, people aren't appreciating the products as much, right? Do you have any commander deck that you really just recognize and think about from the last couple of years? Imagine a world where we just have like Warhammer 40k deck as of right now, Warhammer 40k deck and the March of the Machines commander precons, right? That's all we have. And then if somebody walks up to LGS, to you, to whatever, to ask, hey, I'm new to commander, I want to, you know, play the game, what should I buy? And your answer could be as simple as, hey, here's eight decks that are great. If you buy any one of these eight, you could pretty much sit down, sit down at any commander table and have a good time. Wouldn't that be awesome? Instead of saying, well, there's like 30 something decks. These are a little cheaper. These are better. But the Crimson Vow ones really suck unless you do the zombie one, but not the you know, Covenant one. Like you see the problem right now. This is, this is getting crazy. How do you describe to a new player which deck to get? What about these like weird commander starter decks? right? It's just, it's insane, like, why they continue to pump this product. <sighs> and lastly, organic. I think one of the reasons why I really like Commander was because it was organic. It was just real, visceral. People took cards, they looked at something and says, hmm, that would be really weird if I can make my opponent draw, a, a draw out their entire deck. Huh, okay, let me build a deck where I go and make sure my opponent draws their entire deck. Huh, it's really strange that I, there's a bunch of cards that make it so I do something and my opponents do something. Can I make a deck where I can make sure that everybody does something and I'm like the support class within this commander game? That is the creativity and the organic creativity that is bred by commander where there's not a focus on saying this is a commander card and it's just a card. And you look at it and you say, ah, I can do this really fun thing with it. And that's what I'm trying to say, right? I like it when players can go discover those things themselves. And I think it's a lot more fun for you when you do discover those things, right? Be the first person who think of a new meta. Think of a new way to play this card or see value in a card that other people don't see value at all. That is exciting. But what is it today is here's a bunch of commander cards. We know they're going to be good and you should run them in your deck. Oh, white needs more card draw. Here's a bunch of card draw. Go have fun you're gonna love it and you're gonna slot it into every single commander deck. That is not fun. Personally, I would rather see people, and I, this, the thing is, people are still discovering new ways to run commanders, right, and having more options, but I don't like this heavy-handed push for cards specifically for commander. Again, I'm not against a commander-specific product, I just don't think that it needs to be in every single product, and then literally, giving players less choices because you look at the card and you say, well, this is a better version. Why would I ever run that other card anymore? 
And that really just sucks. And it takes away from that discovery process. So again, that's how I would answer the question of how do I fix it? A couple other things. Um, what do the responses tell me? So first of all, players are super passionate about Commander, right? And I think for me personally is that I, I kind of fear that a lot of the players don't see what's happening and don't see what's coming. There's one person who commented about this and being a cycle and how WotC will basically push, push, push a specific format that's definitely making money for them until that format is like dead or dying. And then they will move on to the next thing because they don't know how to like balance the monetization. They have to monetize one group at a time. And think about it this way too, too much of a good thing, even if they continue pumping out too much, uh, really, really good commander products, et cetera, too much of a good thing will only lead to disappointment eventually. The problem is this, if you keep raising the bar every single set, right, every single set, there's only two options. Number one, we print power creep and guess what? Every single set makes the last set and the cards before obsolete. I'm not sure players really want that, but hey, that's one way to keep going higher and then no one's disappointed. Number two is basically we have to um, continue to just keep pushing it until, well, guess what? Raising the price, whatever, until it dilutes it so much, nobody cares anymore. And I don't think people understand that right now. I mean, right now it's like, oh, it looks so great because every single set we have new commander cards to play with it, whatever. And then you keep buying more products and you buying more products signals the Wizards of the Coast to go make more of those products. And that's exactly the direction we're heading to, right? And of course they know the commander players are willing to shell out more money. And so they're gonna go and seek more money. I mean, what's to prevent like the next commander decks to have serialized cards in them? Where do we go from here? Right, it, you can only go up because any amount of down is going to disappoint everyone. And just to close off the video, I really respect the discourse and the discussion. I appreciate it. And that's one of the things I really like kind of interfacing with people on YouTube and one of the reasons why I started the Discord. So I can have more of these conversations, discussions. And I find it really interesting that basically, look, I don't really think we need to agree with every single human in the world. And truthfully, I can say anything and probably a good chunk of people will disagree with it. I can, I can guarantee you that. And that's okay, right? And that's what makes me want to have human, human interactions because that disagreement is interesting to me and that disagreement makes me a better person because it makes me think about things that I have not thought about. So let's com continue to do that. Let's continue what's important, which is to discuss. And lastly, look, this video, that last video, every video I make is my own opinion. It's just what it is, right? I'm not saying this is how the world feels. I'm not saying this is like, oh, it's doom and gloom. I'm telling the truth, but a profit of whatever. No, it's just my opinion, okay? I think, I think most of you guys understand that, but just understand that. It's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be right. You could disagree with me. You could agree with me. It's fine. And that's the beautiful thing. I think that's it. I think I've done a better job, hopefully, on explaining this topic to everyone. And yeah, that's where I stand right now. Guys, I don't hate commander players. I don't hate the format. I don't think the format needs to go away. I think there is a very healthy reason why commander exists. And I think there's a very healthy thing that commander existing will do for magic. My only fear is that the way that Wiz of the Coast is monetizing and over monetizing commander will eventually destroy the game and they're too blind by the money that they're making right now to make any changes for that. That's it. Mark Solo Games, I'm out. Stay classy. Gonna go ship some Grand Archive cards or something.